Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is our journey with God. The name of our devotional today is called Someone. First, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord. We thank you, my Father, that there is always someone, my Father, that we can emulate, that we can, that we can mimic or we can look up to, we can follow, my God, someone that is doing Christianity a little bit better than us, that has more faith, that knows how to pray a little bit better than us. There is a someone out there that we can look up to, to become better Christians, better people, just like people have coaches, a financial coach, a spiritual coach, uh, an exercise coach. We can be coached by people without them even knowing about it. We can follow their lead. We can make sure that they are people that are worthy to be followed, that they have the same faith as us, and that they are doing something worthwhile with their lives. Therefore, we can learn under them. It is just like a pastor that you like, that you listen to their teaching. That is your someone. That's someone that whenever you need that dose of encouragement, you go to that pastor's teaching and you're always going to walk away with something, a nugget, an encouragement, faith, hope, because that pastor is your someone. Hopefully, your someone is also the pastor at your church. Hopefully, you're going to ch church on a regular basis. You have a home church. We all need a home church. We all need to be part of a congregation, part of a family that is rooted in the Word of God. Thank you so much, my Father. Thank you so much, my God, that when you are at the center of something, Lord, everything is perfect. Thank you, my Lord God, that everything, my God, that we can do in this life, we can only do through you because we are more than overcomers in you, my Father. Thank you so much for the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, the grace, the mercy, the favor, my Father. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And today we will speak about a someone. 1 Corinthians 12.5 says, there are different ministries, but the same Lord. So we are saved, we pray, we read the Bible, and we believe wholeheartedly in God. But there is always that someone. Who's someone, you ask? Someone is that person that prays a little better than you, has more verses memorized than you, and can speak better than you ever will. You feel like the things you do for Christ go unnoticed because people, people are always paying more attention to someone else. And this, in this relatable story of someone, this is the other side of having a, another type of someone that uh, we might be looking at in another way. But don't worry, you aren't the first person to have a someone. For Miriam and Aaron, it was their brother Moses, Numbers 12. They talked about him behind his back because they were jealous that he was in a higher position of authority. Saul's someone was David. 1 Samuel 18, 12 through 16. Saul was jealous of David's successes and responsibilities. 1 Corinthians 12. And he uses the analogy of a human body to demonstrate how the body of Christ works. For as the body is one and has many parts and all the parts of that body Though many are one body, so also is Christ. So we as Christians are all formed of many parts that create one unit or body in Christ. But now God has placed each one of the, the parts in one body just as he wanted. So therefore, we have to trust God in the way that he dispersed the talents, the abilities to each and every one of us. Each member of the body is distinctly important because we all have something to contribute 
just as the eyes are needed to see and ears are needed to hear. So if one member suffers, all the members suffers with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We have to work together because we need each other. When you begin to compare yourself to other to another someone, keep in mind that she or he may be an arm and you may be a leg. Both are equally important, but serve two completely different purposes in relation to the body. What is your ministry and who is that someone in your life? So the takeaway of this teaching basically is not to compare ourselves with another human being that all the different parts of the body of Christ have a, uh, a purpose. It, they have a, an ability, they have a talent. And so we should be looking at ourselves instead of looking towards other people. We need to grow more. We need to pray more. We need to learn how to speak better. We need to be able to speak about Christ and, and become better every day. Imagine if we were to grow, progress, flourish 1% every single day. At the end of the year, okay, we would have grown, progressed 12%. And that is amazing because that means that we are becoming better. We are doing things that normally we can't, we couldn't have done without Christ. And we are basically, um, we are growing in, in a way that we are glorifying the Lord. We are glorifying Christ. So I encourage you to instead of be looking at that someone with whether it's positively or negatively just remember look at yourself and do an inventory of where you're at if you want to pray more or if you want to learn how to pray in public just read the bible read the psalms and start praying through the psalms and you'll see that you'll be able to conquer that giant thank you so much father god for this message Thank you so much. We praise you. My God, we honor you today and forever. In Jesus' name, my Father. Amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain. I also remind you that if you're driving a car, a vehicle, please drive polite. And also keep on smiling because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. 
In Jesus' name, amen.